and just thank you, Lord. Thank you. We just thank and praise God for just being so good to us and allowing us to assemble once again in the house of prayer. And we don't take that for granted. We don't take it lightly. We just thank God for allowing us to come again. We're going to ask that you will stand to your feet. And we are going to sing a song that's called Worship because we have come to worship none other than the name of Jesus.
rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his before he made it. And his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand.
the only living God. And we've come to lift him. We've come to praise him. We've come to honor him. And we've come to clap our hands, do our dance, sing our song. Only to him, the only living. The only living God. He is. He is the only living God. And we've come to serve him on today. Thank you, God. Thank you, musicians, for reminding us. He is Savior. He is Lord. He is the only, only living God. He is Hallelujah to the Lamb. He is, He is God. Let me call your attention to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. In the Old Testament, the book is Genesis. The chapter is 3, verse number 8. If you haven't found it and you need some help, just raise your hand. We'll be glad to help you with that. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. You found that you will discover these words, reading from the New King James Version. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. I want to talk about in God's presence. All right. In, in God's presence. In God's presence. You can, you can leave that on. In God's, in God's presence. In, in God's presence. We, we, find, we find ourselves in the year of 2021 and we're living in a nation, we're living in a world, we're living in a state, in a city that has walked away from God's presence. That's right. They have left, we have left in groves. We have walked away from the presence of God to go on and do our own thing our own way. And because we have left God's presence, Suicide rates uh -oh. are at an all-time high. Right, Pastor. Divorce in the church is just as great as divorce outside of the church. People who really got it going on, people who people look at and say, I wish I would be like them, are in the midst of depression. Who would think, who would think that Tom Brady's wife, supermodel, married to a superstar that they would call the GOAT, the greatest of all time, who would think that she would be caught in depression, who has everything she needs, everything she wants, and carrying herself any, any way she wants to, have a husband that's successful, children that's got it going on, who would think that depression would be so great that she would consider suicide? My God, my God. Who would think that the Halle Berry in her 50s that looks like a 20 year old, who would think that the Halle Berry, the first African American, to rank highest of all in all actresses. Who would think that she would consider suicide? Who would think that the great Alicia Keys, the one who can play, sing, and dance all at the same time, who can cross over from gospel to contemporary to jazz and, and sing it all and do it all. all right. Who would think that she would be so depressed that she can't get out of bed the next day? 
Who would think that quarterbacks and wide receivers and linemen that have their name called and their names are in great lights would consider walking away from it all? It's because our nation, our state, our city, our entire country has walked away from the presence of God. Let me tell you, it's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing to leave the presence of God. I, I've said to you on several occasions, I've said to you on several occasions that, that um, we need to understand that God the Father, yes, sir. the devil, Satan himself, and COVID-19 are the most lied on entities in the world. How do I know that? Because there are false prophets who will tell you what they say God has said and God hasn't said it in his word. How do I know they lie on God? Because there are men and women who have great presentations that will tell you what God has said and God has not said it. I say to you today, my dear, is that if it's not in the word, God didn't say it. God is not putting out a new word. He's not, he's not giving anybody. I hear preachers say, I got a rhema word from the Lord. Well, if he got a rhema word, then I have a rhema word. If she has a rhema word, then I have a rhema word. You see, God is not making house calls just to give you a word outside of this word. So God is lied upon. Well, how do you know that, that the devil is lied upon? Because men, women, boys, and girls always say that the devil made me do it. And if you're over 48, you know Flip Wilson, don't you? You know Geraldine, don't you? And he or she or it will say on a regular basis, it's the devil that made me do it. But the Bible declares that men fall in sin when they walk away from God and when they lean to their own little desires and their own fleshes. It's our inner nature. It is our inner sin nature that pulls us away from God. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing to walk away from the presence of God. Well, preacher, how do you know? How do you know that COVID-19 is lied upon? Well, I know that COVID-19 is lied upon because when I look at Thanksgiving dinners, it's jam-packed. When I look at baby showers, people are packing in there. When I look at bridal showers, people are coming from all different directions. But when I look at sports events, it's crowded, all, even as I speak, it's crowded all over the world. Right. However, when I look at Sunday morning service, yeah. you don't have to have a designated seat anymore. You don't have to tell people to get up out of my seat anymore. You don't, you don't, and that was wrong yesterday, and it was wrong yesteryear, but you don't have to look to see where you're going to sit early. That's why some folk use the excuse, I can get here late, I can sit here where I want. Well, let me just share with you that if you're in the parking lot, you're late. If you're sitting in your car, you're late. If you're not sitting in the seat that you're going to sit in throughout the service, you're already late. Say, well, preacher, I got here at 1030. Well, yeah, you did. But if heaven doors open at 1030 and they close at 1031, what are you going to tell God? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? Well, you know, God, I can get up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and I'm still going to be late because my mama was late. My daddy used to be late. My whole family is known to be late. But we're only late for Sunday morning. We're only late for Wednesday night. We're only late for teachers and, and, and women and men meetings. But when it comes to the game, 
You don't want to stand in that long line so you can get there an hour early. You don't, you don't want to be left out. When it comes to concerts, I mean, over 50,000 people tried to crowd themselves into an event because a concert was going on. What would it be like? I know there are some churches that got lines that are outside around the doors. I understand that. I, I'm with that, and, and that's a great thing. But when I see members of empty churches, Hanging out all over the place, and I'm reminded that COVID-19 is lied upon. When we look at the text, we find the reason why men are still alive. It's because of our foreparents, Adam and Eve. God had them in a place where God will, will walk through in the cool of the day. They were in the presence of God. God was in their presence. And if they weren't in God's presence, God will make his way to their presence. It's a good thing to be in the presence of God. It's a dangerous thing to be out of God's presence. The reason why I say that is because God, when you were in God's presence, God rescues us from us. He rescues us from ourselves. Let me tell you, you need to be rescued from yourself. How do you know? How do you know, preacher? I need to be rescued from myself. I'm a pretty good fellow. I'm a pretty good girl. I've, I've done things well, and, and I, I haven't killed anybody. I don't deal with dab and homosexuality. I'm all right. I'm not, a, I'm not a prostitute. I'm not a pimp. I, I don't do drugs. I'm all right. But the problem is that you are dangerous to your own self. Because the Apostle Paul says, even while he was saved, in Romans chapter 7, the Apostle Paul declares unto us today, he says that every time I would to do good, every time I thought about doing what was right, evil was present with me. I mean, there's a wrestle going on within us. And it doesn't matter how saved you are. Let me just park right there and let you know, if you're saved, you're just saved. You're not any saved more than anybody else. You, you're not more saved because you've been saved for 40 years. You just as saved as the person that just got saved. And the person that just got saved is just as saved as you are. Amen. You see, in the church, in the church, we like to pump our chest out. We like to talk about who we are and what position we hold and how we carry ourselves on Sunday. But there are more days in the week than Sunday. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12, now don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then show forth that which is good and acceptable unto the Lord. I mean, when you're transformed, you transform from Monday to Sunday. You transform from Sunday to Monday. You transform all week and all weekend long. And even at the party, you're transformed. When, when, I, when, I, when I do weddings, when I when I do weddings, uh, I, I look at Sister David and I give her that eye. I tell her it's time for us to go now. <laughs> we need to go, Sister Henry, before they put us out of here. Matter of fact, we holding up the, the, the bar. We, 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 we messing up their, their, their swag because we sitting here and everybody in the place just looking at us. <laughs> Reverend, when you getting out of here? Reverend, don't you have to prepare for tomorrow? <laughs> Reverend, don't you think it's past your bedtime? And so I just allow them to have their way because uh, after the wedding is over, my, my commitment has been taken place. And before I can get to the car, I can hear it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with music. There's nothing wrong with dance. So don't get all bent out of shape because the preacher's still there because the fact of the matter is God is still present. That's right. That's right. The psalmist, the psalmist is there, the psalmist declares to us that you can go down to the pits of hell, God is there. Yeah. You can go up to the bowels of heaven, God is there. You can walk around on planet earth, God is there. It is the omnipresence of God. 
He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Everywhere God turns, he bumps into himself. When he heads the east, he bumps into himself in the west. He is the omnipresent God. In the text, we find Adam and Eve living in God's presence. Walking with God, God walking with them, sharing with God, and God sharing with them. It, it's, it's a mighty good thing when God is walking with you. Amen. Before you left home today, you should have said, God, come on, be with me. You should have said, God, go before me. God, reside with me. And God, cover my front and cover my back. Because God is all places at the same time. He is just God. Thank you, thank you, songwriters, when you say that it is Jesus who is the mighty one, it is Jesus who is the omnipresent one, it, it's not Buddha. It, it's not Confucius. It's, it's, it, it's not Muhammad. It is Jesus, God the Father himself, God alone. He's all place. So God ministers to them and they minister to God. And we got to get back to where we minister to God. We have to get back to where we praise him and worship him because of who he is, not because of what he does. All right. mm -hmm. You know, that's why I've told the choir several times on several occasions uh, that we need to sing songs that give God glory. Amen. We need to sing songs that, that praise him for who he is and, and, and carry it. We need to carry songs and carry a note that honors God for, for just being God. Thank you for making a selection this morning that says you are God. You are God alone. You, you are God. You are, you are Savior. You are Lord. You are God. If that's not enough for you to shout about, yeah. then you better check yourself because you're about to wreck yourself. He is. He's God alone. I just want to report this morning and maybe news to somebody. There is no God like our God. There is none like him. There is no one like him. There is nobody like him. There is no creature like him. There is no being like him. He is God. Now who can't praise that kind of God? He is the self-existing God. Nobody voted him in as God. He is just God. He is God alone. So they had this privilege that we don't have right now. They, they walked with God and they stayed with him and they, they were with him in the morning and the evening and God checked on them and they, they fellowship with God. God says, I have a tree that's sitting in the midst of the garden. Yes, sir. I don't want you to touch that tree. Well, matter of fact, I don't want you to eat of that tree. For the day that you eat of that tree, you will surely die. God, God explains it to them, and he, he says without speaking it, he says, I'm not going to move my tree. I'm not going to put a fence around my tree. I'm not going to segregate my tree from the rest of the trees. That tree right there, don't eat of it, for the day that you eat of it will surely die. But the Bible, the Bible teaches that Miss Eve saw it. The serpent called it, the devil, the serpent calls it to her attention. Remember, he didn't make her do it. It was because of her only flesh desires that she did it. It's, it's right there in verse number six. It says, the woman saw the tree. It was good for food. The woman saw the tree. It was pleasant to the eyes. The woman saw the tree, and it was a tree desirable, de desirable to make one wise. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye. In the pride of life. We keep getting caught up on these same three things. See, there's no other temptation on planet earth than lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Any sin you've ever thought about? Any sin you've ever committed? Any sin that you, you were tempted by? And you can find it in one of these three categories. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. When Jesus was tempted in Matthew chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 4, he was tempted by lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Satan comes to him while he's hungry. Yes, sir. He said, hey, if you be the son of God, he says, go ahead and make these stones bread. Go, go ahead and make these stones bread since you're hungry. 
Check this out. The devil never messed with you on areas that you got off so early. He comes to you at your weakest moment. He comes to you when you're down and out. That's why suicide takes place after a person has been depressed because the devil keeps pumping it in them and showing them. And so you see, just this week, we saw very vivid evidence of how the devil operates. When you have parents that will buy a gun for a 15-year-old and, 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 and put it in, in his possession. Now, he can't even buy liquor, but he got a gun. He can't even drive a car, but he got a gun. When, it, when, when parents will, will buy a gun and know that this child is up to no good with the gun, and the mama will say, you got to learn how to not get caught. It says, it says we walked away from the presence of God. It says that any one of us can be under the same influence of the devil. We have to walk in the Lord. Young people, young people, young people all over this world, make sure you trust God. Be careful who you hang out among. Be careful, be careful when you hang out, and if you see something, you better tell something. Because it's not cool to hear some dangers on the way and let the danger take place. That's what Miss Eve's problem was. She 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 had seen the danger. She had eaten up the danger. She participated in the danger. And she carried out the danger. And when Adam ate, it became sin. Boy, women just really got it going on. It wasn't sin until Adam ate. It was temptation to Miss Eve, but it became sin when Adam ate. Now here they are, they hanging out with God, they got the best parts of life, they got life on the, on the cool, I mean they got it really going on. They, they're the only two persons in the whole wide world that got connection with God. Everybody else that's out there are animals, snakes, rodents, everything else out there flew in the air, they had to find their own food. But God was present with these two people. And they chose the outside influences. It says something to married couples today. It says, as long as you are walking with the Lord, you can make it. It also says to married couples, as long as you don't have outside influences that are negative influences, you can make it. And the third thing it says to married couples, as long as you exist as a couple and not as an individual, you can make it. Too many minds, me, I. Because if you develop your life around being a team, then God can work with the team. But it's, a, it's at a point where, where we, we've gotten so sophisticated We've gotten so technologically advanced. We've gotten so into ourselves until we have forgotten about God. Just the other day, I heard a brother say, I did all of this. And someone reminded him, you know, you couldn't do it without God. He said, oh, no, I did all of this. <sighs> the five works are not far away. The lightning may strike at any moment. I would be afraid. And now it's 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 all right to be a fool, but to stay a fool. I mean, you know, we got children that climb up fools' heels, but when you got old grown folk that still climbing up the same hill and they saw that it was a mistake earlier and they still climbing up the same hill and then if somebody remind you that you ought to be giving glory to God and you're not sane enough to say Lord I thank you and then to turn right around and say no God didn't have anything to do with this <laughs> young brothers young sisters run she may be shaped like a coca cola bottle but if she doesn't have God in her heart, run. Sir, so, sir, he, he may limp when he walks and you just like his bow leg. If he doesn't have God in his heart, get out of the way. 
He may sing like Barry White. He, he may be able to rap like Tina Pentagrams and, and Lennon Williams. But if he doesn't have God in his life, run! Yes, God. The Bible says flee. Flee means not to coolly walk away. Flee means get out of here. Flee means to get everything you have, put all you have into it, and run. So Adam, Adam listens to Miss Eve, and he eats of the fruit. We get to verse number eight, they've already messed up. In eight verses, out of 66 books of the Bible, they couldn't make it past eight verses. When you get to chapter three, you see chapters one and chapter two just repeat what, what each other have said. Chapter two repeats for what, what chapter one has said and it gives more detail of what chapter one has said. And then he brings man on the scene in chapter two. And after he brings man on the scene, then they try to make eight verses and couldn't make eight verses. That's just like some of us. We can't make eight days of doing the same righteous thing over and over and over again. Some say that if you can do it for 21 days, it becomes a habit. God doesn't operate around habits. He, he operates around your commitment to him and how much you are committed to him and how faithful you will be to him. We are about to make people faithful unto the Lord. We are designed to influence other people. We are designed to be the catalysts of other people coming to the Lord. But if that's going to be the case, we got to get past eight verses. Brother Miles, they couldn't get past eight verses. The Bible says that and they heard the sound of the Lord God. One thing you got to know, we all have sin. We all have fallen short. We all have messed up. And there's no sense in hiding because we serve an omnipotent God, an omniscient God, and all the an all present, an omnipresent God. He's, he already knows it before you do it. He just tries to give you a free moral agent, which is choice, to let you do it yourself. Now, I, say, I say to young people, you ain't got to follow him with no soul, and, and with no, no, everybody got, everybody probably investigated now. I mean, everybody, I mean, we got private, everybody, private investigative business is going out of business now. I mean, many of them have shut their door because they, everybody's a private investigator now. You don't have to investigate him to find out what he's doing simply because he can do it while you're not looking. You don't have to ask her questions and be, just mean her and treat her ignorantly because she can, if she's going to do it, she's going to do it out of your presence. So here we are. We, verse number eight. They have sinned. They have fallen short. They messed up. They missed the mark. They just like we are. Everybody in this room, everybody that's listening to me, we all have fallen short. We all have missed the mark. So let me tell you, church folk, we can't turn up our nose at anybody else because we all have messed up. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 declares like this, for we all have sinned. It didn't say y'all have sinned. It said for we all have sinned and we all have fallen short of God's glory. And I told you before, I ain't telling you mine. I ain't worried about you telling me yours. Let's take it before the Lord. So God is coming. And, and God, the, the, the Bible personifies God. Gives him the characteristics of humans, of persons. He says, the, the, the writer says, the sound of the Lord walking. Now, you know, God can walk if he chooses to walk. He doesn't have to walk if he doesn't want to walk because he's omnipresent. He, he just is. He, he's all places. In, in your dirt, he's there. In your good times, he's there. In your depression, he's there. In the midst of your rejoicing, he's there. He's just there because he is God. So here the, the, the author says, Moses says in Genesis that, that they heard the sound of the Lord God. 
Lord God, the self-existing God. Jehovah God, the self-existing God, the God that no one brought in to be God. We got people fighting and trying to upset elections so they can be the next one in. God doesn't have to go through the election. <laughs> He's just God. He's always been God. It says the self-existing God came visiting them after they've sinned. Let me tell you, God has mercy and God has grace. Yes, sir. And if you have fallen short, or not since you have fallen short, since you have messed up, you need to run to God. Don't get so down on yourself until you can just, just blow up your life and make matters worse. Run to God with it. And when God comes walking through the cool of the day, when God comes and shows up, answer him. There's somebody that's in, under the sound of my voice. God has been, been speaking to you. God has been walking with you. And, and you're walking. Look what God does. He's walking in the garden. He's walking in the same place that he gave them to live. He's walking in the paradise that he created for them. But not only that, he's walking in the same place where they sinned. So it says to us, to, it says to us today that regardless of where you sinned, regardless of how you sinned, regardless of who you with when you sinned, you need to understand that God is willing to go down to the guttermost and pull you up by the utmost. He's willing to go in the dirt for you. He's willing to go to back for you. You see, the devil has said that God is through with you. God is not through with you because when God gets through you, they will fold your hand in service for the last time. Your tongue will cleave to the roof of your mouth. When God is through you, with you, they will zap your blood out of you and pump fluid into you. When God is through with you, you will never have a shadow anymore. When God is through with you, you are done. The preacher come and they read the Old Testament scripture over you. When God is through with you, they read New Testament scriptures over you. When, when God is through with you, they get some pride to stand up and pray for you. Pray for your family over you. When God is through I want to tell somebody today, God ain't through with you. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you've been through, God, and some of you who are retired, God, God's not through with you. You got work to do. God has released you from a secular job so you can do spiritual things for him in a greater way. That's why it says that the single folk, lives ought to be turned totally toward God. And there are folks just running to get married. I mean, they just, they just can't wait. They, just, they grab anything. They go look up on the rock and say, hey, you, you married material. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm right about it. <laughs> it's, it's a person that, that you told that he wasn't, he wasn't worth their time. It's a person you told that, that he's not going to treat you right. People go, men and women, go looking on the stones and rocks and, and, and railroad tracks trying to find somebody so they can, so they can get married. <laughs> when the married folks say, you better not do that, you better not do, you better not do that. I asked a couple of brothers on a regular basis, man, when are you going to get married? He said, for what? <laughs> Sister Dave is calling you now. You can't keep going with us. Sister David said, you need to come home and do this now. And guess what I do? I just tell them right on home. <laughs> Enjoy your season where you are. That's right. God has placed you in this season. Young people, don't be in a hurry to get grown. Enjoy who's buying the bacon, the eggs, the soup. Enjoy who's buying the flour, the meal right now because when it's your time, you ain't going to want to do it. And check this out. What you pay $5 for today, it'll be $10 tomorrow. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get, a, don't get in a hurry. Enjoy your childhood. Enjoy every moment of your childhood. Take advantage of your childhood. Because you're gonna to get to a point in your life where you go, you're not gonna hit speed bumps, you're gonna hit valleys. 
And you're going to be expected to handle them with God on your side. So God came looking for them, the same place he blessed them in, in the same place that, that, that was paradise to them, but it became the same place where they sinned. Text says that God started walking through and walking. They heard the voice. They heard God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Let me tell you. Sin ought to make you shame. Sin ought to make you embarrassed. Sin, sin ought to make you walk around in the dark. Because that's what sin does. It feels good. It looks good. It tastes good. But it's still sin. I was, I was doing a marriage counseling session and, and there was a couple in the room and they had their baby. And as long as, as, long as, the, as we were going through the session, the baby was grinning and, and playing and happy. And so I stood up and I closed the blinds. I shut the door and I turned the lights off. In the moment I turned the lights off, the baby started screaming and crying. And I said to that couple, this is how y'all living in y'all lives, in the dark, and now the darkness even scares the baby. In the dark, we, we, we live in it. And some of us like darkness, but the Bible says men love darkness because their deeds were evil. Let me tell you, you may be in the dark today. But in the midst of your darkness, God is saying, come unto me. In the midst of your darkness, God is, is in love with the backslider. In the midst of your darkness, God is reaching out for you and saying, I want you back in my presence. All you have to do is forsake your evil ways and come on back to me. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will wash you white up in stone says God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves and guess where they hid themselves from? From the presence of God. From the presence of the Lord God. Meaning that they hid themselves from the one who could help them. The reason why people dig deeper and deeper ditches, ditches in their lives is because they will not get help. Let me just say to you today, if you are a member of the New Beginning Church and you came to me and you had problems that I couldn't handle, I'm, I'm not so stuck on myself that I'm going to try to handle your every problem. They have professionals for that. They have people that I will refer you out to for that. I think pastors have done people a great disservice by telling them, come to me, I can handle your problems. Let me just serve you notes. I know it's a secret. I got issues myself. I mean, I, I messed up myself. I need counseling myself. I'm devastated by what's going on in my life myself. I'm looking for somebody that I can tell it to. That won't tweet it out. That won't text it out. You, you, you know, people look at leaders and preachers and pastors. They say, oh, he really got it. We just put on a suit and get up here and look like we got it going on. We, we in shambles. Over 1,700 pastors in the United States of America, I'm sure it's more than that now, have just walked away from the church and some of them have committed suicide. Because they don't know where they can go. Then, I, I mean, if you take it for granted when I say pray for me, let me tell you, pray for me. I need your prayers. Pray for me. And one pastor came back, and in the midst of going through, he got a divorce. And after he got his divorce, he came back and he said, y'all didn't understand. I was going through. I was about to lose my mind. So he took a year or so sabbatical. And people trying to figure out what's going on with them. Let me tell you what's going on with us. The same thing is going on with you. We got children. We got wives. We got jobs. We got, we got community stuff. We got family issues. We got drunk uncles and bad cousins. Same thing going on with you, going on with us. And we need help. So if you come to me and you need, you, you need help, I'm going to see you where you can get some help. 
I'm not going to be so stuck on myself that I'm going to handle all your issues and all your problems and, 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 and wear you out with junk because I don't know. I've taken you far as, as far as I can go. Now it's time for me to give you a number. BR549. Because we need help. We all need help. So it says that Adam and Eve, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God and they hid themselves among the trees in the garden. Trees. They, they walked away from, from God and hid themselves among the trees. They walked away from the one who made them. The one who knows them. The one who has been blessing them and they hid themselves among the trees. But guess where the trees were? In the garden. <laughs> what God is trying to tell us is that we can't get away from him. We're not so smart. Our degrees are not so long. Our education has not been too many hours where we can walk away from God and still live sanity, with sanity. If you are walking away from God, let me tell you, you're already insane. You know, people walk around talking about if you talk to yourself, you're crazy. I say if you don't talk to yourself, you're already crazy. Every now and then, you need to talk to yourself. The psalmist, the psalmist says in Psalm 103 and Psalm 105, he says that, that I was talking to myself. He says, he says, oh, my soul. This word soul in the original Hebrew means one's very own self. Let me tell you, if you're so far from God, you need to tell yourself to get back to him. You need to tell yourself that, God, I need you every hour, every minute, every second, every moment of the day. We need God. We have this narcissistic attitude like, like we can make it. That, that's not new. It was the same way in the garden. They hid themselves from the presence of God. You can't hide yourself from the presence of God. And then they leave the creator to go to the created. They leave the creator to go to the creature. They leave the creator to go to some trees. So because they left from, the, from God and went to the trees, oh, over 2,000 years ago, God took a tree. Because they depended on the tree, now we have to depend on the tree. And it doesn't take trees for us to depend on. It was only one tree. Yeah, yeah, it, it was over 2,000 years ago that, that man had messed up. Man had fallen short. Man had sinned. Man had missed the mark. But over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, there were three trees. The tree on the right didn't matter. Because the guy that was hanging on the tree on the right, what he did, what he did was he confessed unto Jesus Christ and said, when you get into my, your kingdom, please remember me. Yeah, all right, all right. So he died from sin. The guy on the left, the left died in sin. But the man in the middle died for sin. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for, for one tree. It doesn't matter how many other trees were on Calvary. That one tree, the tree that was in the middle, had Jesus hanging on it. And that one tree is enough to get us back into the presence of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I, mean, I, I want to be in his presence. I want to be in his presence. Over 2,000 years ago, he died on a tree. On a skull hill called Calvary. My Lord and your God. Jesus Christ himself. I tell you, he died on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men riveted him. Mean men nailed him. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, my Lord and your God took a tree, I tell you, marked up Calvary Hill. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. On the tree they killed him. They, they hung him on the tree. They nailed him on the tree. They ribbed him on the tree. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Crown Calvary. On a tree. They took him off the tree. They took my Lord and your God off the tree. 
They laid him in a violent tomb. It was a violent tomb. They, they, they sealed it with the rock. They, they covered it with the rock. They laid in them my rock. Because under that third day morning, he said, you can kill this body, but in three days, I'll raise it up again. Out of that third day morning, the one who died on the tree, the one who died on the tree, Jesus the Christ, I tell you, he died on a tree. They laid him in a body. He, he said it, he said it, he set us free on the tree. But he rose for us that third day morning. He got up with all power. All power in heaven and earth in his hand. And if you're listening to me today and you walked away from the presence of God, this is your moment. He says, come now. All you who have messed up, come now. All you who are burdened, come now. All of you of heavy lady, come now. Come and drink of the water that has been made for you. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. As you are. I already told you all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. All of us have missed the mark. But God says come. Jesus says come. The door is open. I want to be in his presence. There's hope in his presence. There's love in his presence. There's peace in his presence. I want to be in his presence. Will you come? The door is open. Will you trust him? You trust her? You trust him? You trust it? Now I recommend that you trust Jesus. The door is open. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister. We offer Christ. We offer Christ. The door is open. They give you a brand new life. New life for Father. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on to Christ. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is a moment that you can guarantee yourself a place in heaven. If you've never received him, will you bow your head with me and invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your Savior and to be your Lord? Just repeat after me these simple words. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried in a borrowed tomb. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you pray this prayer, you're now born again, you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you can, can relax in the Lord and join a good Bible teaching church. And I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and Jesus is the main attraction. Jesus is the captain of the ship. And Jesus is the one who leads us and guides us. For those of us who are still wrestling, still vacillating,
still going from one point to the other and not giving it our all. I want to pray with you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless those. Bless those who are saved. But they are not acting saved. Bless those who are saved, but they are not serving as if they are saved. Bless those who are saved that are not, have not given 100% to you. I ask you to touch as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We have to stay in the presence of God. Stay in his presence through Bible study. Stay in his presence through Sunday school. Stay in his presence through quiet time along with the Lord. Stay in God's presence. give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand real high and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. For those of you who are online or in the building and you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving to Zell. Our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. Or you can mail your offering in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. And bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. as well as the communion of Jesus Christ where we uh, come to to celebrate Jesus Christ and his his blessed blessing that he has given us through his death burial and resurrection before he died he said to his disciples he said this is my body and this is the wine of the New Testament as often as you do this, it shows forth my death and my suffering until I come again. What we have to do is make sure that we have no 
no anguish or no problems or no issues with anybody else. This is the moment where we surely, surely ought to know to always, to always hold no on against anybody. We are reminded that we need to make sure that uh, our hearts are pure, our hearts are right. We have to make sure that we have nothing that hinders us from the presence of God. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. God, we bless you. We honor you and we praise you. We thank you, Father, for this privilege of communing with you. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and keeping us. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made by giving his life for us. We thank you, Lord, for wrapping your arms around us and giving us a privilege to celebrate this moment. We pray that you bless the table. Bless the bread, bless the drink. Bless us, Father God, that we will be sold out for you and for you alone. Bless us, Lord, Father God, that our hearts will be turned toward you, that life will be made the better, that we, Father God, will be about your business. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you at home, by now you ought to have your bread and your drink. We want to celebrate this great communion with each other, whether we're in present, we're present at the building or not. We want to celebrate together. First impression is coming.
met with his disciples and he broke bread with them. He prayed over it, said, eat thee all of this. Then he showed them the cup. He said, this is a cup of the New Testament, of the covenant. It is a cup for, it is the blood that I have shed for your redemption. Drink me all of it. at her church and she's coming over here to help us out. So if, she, if I call her up or she walk up, don't look out of, out of the corner of your eyes and say, look, he did it for her, but he won't do it for anybody else. So we want to welcome Sister Hughes for coming to celebrate with us and, and join us. Today we're headed to the Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, the Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church in Southwest Houston. We'll ask you to come over and join us. Uh, you will have to go through uh, protocols for COVID-19, but come on, be a part of our services. This is our outing that we have every year at the Holy Trinity Church. Come on, be a part of it. Looking forward to a glorious time in the Lord. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are united in church, centered in families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. And Jesus says, 
cannot, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. The Bible says, after they had communion, they sung a hymn and they went out. You are dismissed.